We're back at Lake Drive Custom. Last episode, it was all about steel, and this episode, it's all about engineered lumber. We're down in the basement. First thing I wanna talk about is our floor framing. So we're working with the guys over at Warehouser as well as Huber for our subfloor system. We opted to go with an inch and an eighth Advantech over the standard three quarter subfloor. And the reason being is we wanted a super stiff floor. Taking that into consideration, we knew that we could increase our joist layout from say maybe the traditional 16 inch to a 19.2 or a 24 inch on center joist. We opted to stay with the 16 inch because it still gives us enough room for our mechanicals, but it offers us that luxury home rating that the guys over at Warehouser will stamp on the set once they run the calcs on your build. So above me, you can see we increased our ceiling height to nine foot. We have all our joist space at 16 inches on center. They're hanging off this steel beam, and we're also using the Advantech subfloor glue. It comes out as a foam, gels up, drop the sheets, you got a couple minutes, and everything gets screwed down with our PanFast gun getting that full glue and screw method on that subfloor. One of the common questions that we get, especially down in a basement, is how we're gonna create a fire separation from the web of these joists, from the living space, or even if it's not living space, the mechanical space down in the basement. In our case, we did not do any sort of fireproofing on the joists themselves, which is offered. Um, we're actually gonna be installing a full jib ceiling. In this case, the blue board with plaster. In the areas that you know may just be mechanical, they'll do rock wool and it will actually sit on the bottom cord. So in between the joists, you'll actually have rock wool that will sit between. Uh, we're actually gonna be doing that here anyway for sound. So between adding that rock wool that rests on the bottom cord of either joist, as well as our jib, we'll get that fire separation that is required by code. Another product that we're using from Huber is their zip panels, uh, but specifically their Zip R, which is their standard sheathing, 7 16 by the green, but also with foam backing that's applied to the back of this. This is all one product. And what this does is it gives us a thermal break between our, you know, our standard wall framing and our sheathing. Now, a couple questions that we get is whether or not this will resist shear. Absolutely, they have all the technical data on their website. In this case, we actually engineered this building because of the amount of steel. We had a lot of shear walls built, so we had to take that into consideration. And as we walk through this project, you'll see some traditional CDX sheathing on some of the walls with up nailing pattern. That's really where we're getting our shear resistance. And then also adding nailing to this in specific areas. From an installation standpoint, there's a couple things that are super important to note. Uh, this is an R9.2. Six. So we have just about you know, two inches overall. That's seven sixteenths, inch and a half foam on the back. We need a solid inch and a half bedment into our framing members. So with a standard three and a half inch nail that fits in most of your, your framing guns, you're gonna get that inch and a half of bedment. So it's super important to use a gun and you want something that you can depth set. You shoot that first nail and make sure that you're flush with the sheathing. If you do have to go back and hit a couple nails in with your hammer, you're gonna wanna take into consideration that you could crush that. So you wanna be cognizant of that when doing so. So this is actually a perfect example here. They left this uh, corner out, the sheathing off it, because uh, we got the Simpson tie down. There's actually a big bracket that goes in here, uh, basically holding the house down to the, the foundation. You know, obviously these are our standard, but this is gonna be our, our main tie down. Um, but what I wanted to talk about is our corner details. So if you look at the, um, the website or the literature for, for this stuff, it actually tells you that I'm gonna have a hard time explaining it, but if this was cut flush with our stud, which would be a standard application, and you'd apply it, that's actually okay by their book. So you have, right in this case, we have an inch and a half of foam, and what they say is they need, you, know, you wanna make sure you get your proper coverage. You do tape, tape over here, and then that would cover all the foam, which is great, that, that meets their criteria. But my concern is, in, in this house, this is all gonna be cedar. So we're gonna have woven corners. You're gonna lose a lot of nailing here. So what we've, we've done is we're actually rabbiting, cutting that foam, so we're setting our, our scale saw depth to inch and a half, cutting the foam out, peeling it off. So when I go to install this panel, now I have nailing on both sides. You can tape that, you have wood here, wood here, you get your woven corner, uh, and you're not losing that inch and a half of foam because I know personally, if I'm hitting an inch and a half of foam all the way up, especially with a woven corner, I'm gonna hit that foam all the time. So this is definitely a better detail. I know the guys over at Sweener Brothers, I actually saw Jeff at JLC, and uh, he had bought the new TS-75 tracks off from Festool and told me he bought it so he could miter the corners. So if you guys aren't following them, make sure you are. They, they build a killer product. 
The other detail I wanted to talk about was our bottom. So you can actually see here we have a PT 2 by ripped, which we nailed into the sill. So what this allows us to do is we have that foam all the way down onto our sill. Uh, and then here, we're gonna actually be able to lap our tape over this, and that's preventing anything from getting up to the bottom side of the foam, insects, damage, whatever the case may be. We're actually gonna liquid flash um, from the foundation, run a piece of tape, liquid flash the bottom of this, come up, and then we'll tape our zip tape over it, um, creating you know, a solid barrier and also getting our air, air tightness that we're looking for on the bottom of these panels. This is the subfloor that we're using, inch and an eighth Advantech. You can actually see it's got the standard tongue and groove. Besides the, the floor stiffness, one thing I really like about this stuff is this doesn't get crushed. Anyone that's put this three-quarter stuff together on the, on the fly or in the field, you're banging this stuff together and that tongue and groove get damaged. Being that we're inch and an eighth, you get a lot more meat. So when you're banging these things together, you definitely get more of a positive connection. Everything is basically framed with conventional lumber but we do have some of these timber strands from Weyerhaeuser that we're using on the important walls. And when I say important walls, the walls that really need to be flat. Um, Two-story walls at the stairwell, kitchens, bathroom where there's tile. Um, these are about three times the cost of a, a normal uh, dimensional piece of lumber. But in those areas, it really does make a big difference. Um, we're gonna have a killer kitchen in this place, uh, inset cabinetry, so flat walls are super important. Let's go take a look. So we're up on the first floor deck and they're framing walls and getting ready for our second floor deck to go on. Uh, but this is the wall I was talking about. We've used all the timber strands on this entire length of the wall, as well as that front wall where we're framing a window out right now. But the reason being is that this is an entire wall of all traditional inset cabinetry. So it's super important that the wall is flat, makes installation way easier. For a couple hundred dollars upcharge, because we're not framing the whole house with this stuff, it's worth it. And we're gonna do the same thing in our master bathroom, as well as our tub wall, where we have tiles to prevent any of that lippage. We have to start with the framing. Uh, and really bring that all the way through the finish. And I also briefly mentioned about the shear wall and how we were accomplishing the shear even with that zip R panel. We can actually see this garage wall right here has half inch CDX on the opposite side, which will be buried by blue board in the finish, but right now you can see the back side. And also all our horizontal seams are blocked uh, and that's per the engineer's spec. So you can actually look to the left of me. That's gonna be a two story wall over there where our living room will live. Um, but all of those seams are blocked so everything has the, the required shear that the engineer has stamped on these drawings for this design. I posted a pretty sick picture of this window behind me. This is actually the future powder room, but I also asked the question about how you guys deal with insulated headers. We do have that thermal break with our insulated sheathing, but I am curious what you guys would do. Uh, and in this situation, we added this 2x6 on the horizontal here for future trim install, just like we have an apron on the bottom of that, and we need nailing for it. Uh, so make sure you check out the Instagram at NSBuilders. This build is the hashtag Lake Drive Custom. Stay tuned for the next episode.